and that's for good. The story I chose was very sensitive. In the beginning, it was hard for me to do the story and watch children suffering. But with time, and day after day in the hospital of children in Damascus, I learn a lot from children and their parents and Basma's team. I'm more patient now and stronger. After the Mina book, I continue working on my story. I have a lot of questions without answers, but I think this is life and my role in it to be a messenger and tell people stories through English. Working as a photographer in Iraq came with a challenge. At times, it can be extremely dangerous, even in the more peaceful Kurdish region. If someone doesn't like what you publish about them, it is not uncommon to receive very real death threats. Having good contacts with the police and with politicians it's a must. Not because you want to show them in a positive light, but because these are the people with the power to open the doors to hidden stories. Prison, corruption, smuggling, even my story about violence against women. Without political and police contact, I would have never been allowed to enter a woman's shelter. My plan is finishing setting the first Iraqi photography agency, while continue to work on my own projects. I'd like to participate in more international workshops like Mina. Eventually, I'd like to create an Iraqi photography school and produce a book about Iraq. As a woman, I have always been interested in feminist issues and seeing around violence directed to women, sometimes towards domestic workers, towards wives, girls and daughters. So they are generally the vulnerable part in 
any kind of relation. And the Lebanese law doesn't protect them. So I decided to fight back through my pictures. about mines in Kurdistan. I chose that subject because I think that we must say to the world to stop making these things, to stop the factories in the world. Because it's not just killed their enemy. It's killed the real people. Every day in my life I hear about mice killed people or making them handicapped. But I didn't know how we can stop that. So I just want to make something that maybe is getting better. I think with my photography, I will help to understand much better the problems and the situations of the hard life of people. and topics that arise questions. So when I first learned about the theme of the projects, which is active citizenship, the first thing that came into my mind was the lack of press freedom in the Arab world, where many journalists, bloggers, and others lie behind bars for their activities. <laughs> to be an active citizen in the Middle East is not an easy thing to do. It requires a lot of courage to put up with the consequences. So after a lot of thinking, I chose my topic about gay activists in Lebanon because a close friend of mine is gay, but never dared to be open about it, and I saw how that affected her life. Plus, talking openly about one's sexuality in the Arab world is such a taboo. So imagine when it comes to sexual acts between members of the same gender. <laughs> So my friend put me in contact with a lot of gay activists in Beirut and I simply wanted to explore through my images the stories of these activists. <laughs> the harassment they go through and how they're slowly fighting to protect their rights, not just on gay rights issues, but on all human rights levels. <laughs> 